Hello there and welcome to another Python tutorial. This one is all about text blob. It's a simple library. It's uh, suitable for beginners. So if you are one, I'm sure you're going to love this video. It is very easy to follow. You don't need a lot of programming knowledge. Yet, once you understand how this works, you can use it on various side projects. It's a library built on top of NLTK, so it helps us analyze uh, text. I, I mean, that's the simplest explanation that I have. Um, if you have a task to analyze reviews of a product or maybe a business on Google Maps, you can, of course, go through these reviews one by one, or you can use TextBlob and leverage what it offers to, to do that a bit faster. And I'll start with a few simple examples, so not product related, just a few simple sentences, and we're going to build from there. So let's start from having a simple text that claims that the weather is great. Now this is a positive um, sentence, I think we can all agree. So whoever said that really enjoys the weather. And we can extract that information with text blob as well by checking the first, of course, we need to process the text. So the process text would be text blob text. And once we have that, we can access the polarity. So processed text dot polarity. And it always returns an integer between minus one and one. So if we get a value of one, it means that whatever we have analyzed is positive or minus one, it means that it's negative or it can be anything in between. So of course, the closer it is to zero, it means that it's more neutral. So let's print polarity plus string of polarity. And what we expect is, of course, a high number closer to one. In this case, we get a polarity of one. What we analyzed is positive. Of course, if we use negative words, so for example, it's terrible, then we get a polarity of minus one. So you can imagine if you have a thousand reviews of an Amazon product, you can go through all of them using the library and you get a bit more insights. And I, in fact, one of the things that we're going to do by the end of this video is and go through the reviews of Disneyland. And I think I have a, a database of close to 50,000 reviews. So we're going to take a look into a bit of a more complex example. But before we go into that, let's take one more thing. That's subjectivity. What we have here is first the polarity. So is, is that sentence positive or negative? Or is that review positive or negative? Uh, we can also check if it's subjective. So subjectivity. And this would return us a value between zero and one. So since it's subjectivity, one means subjective, zero means objective. Subjectivity, and then we can have plus string of subjectivity. Now, I don't know what your expectations are of this, um, but you might be surprised of, of the outcome. So the polarity was something that we saw, terrible weather, polarity of minus one, subjectivity of one. So, and, and I, I do agree with that. I mean, it might rain outside and someone might say that the weather is terrible, but other people really like rain and for them, that's an amazing weather. So I, I do agree with the outcome of, of the analysis from TextBlob. I would not say that it would be accurate uh, all the time. I hope that it would be most of the time accurate, but we can do some sort of an adjustment for that uh, using these, uh, the, the outcome. So uh, if we get an outcome of 0 0.6, for example, for this one, maybe it's a neutral review. Maybe we would like to have the threshold a bit up, maybe to 0 0.7. So it doesn't mean that if we have a polarity of 0 point or any number above zero, that it's just straightforward po positive review. Um, or that if it's below zero, it's negative. Same goes for the subjectivity. Um, there has to be a certain threshold that we can define on our own. Now, there is one more thing, that's the sentiment. And I don't want to spend too much time on this because basically it returns both polarity and subjectivity. So sentiment, I'm going to just print it as I'm not going to use it in the, in the video uh, in the coming part. But as you can see, it just returns a list of, of both the polarity and the subjectivity. So, um, of course, if you want to extract that, you can, instead of extracting polarity and subjectivity separately. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something that you might want to do. I'm going to comment this part out. So um, it's still here if you want to refer back to it, but I'm going to focus on that example related to the reviews. So first, I'm going to open the folder where I have the Disneyland reviews. 
as you can see it's a excel file it has uh, 43,000 reviews and the way they're structured is we have the review ID we have the rating so what they they rated Disneyland the year month reviewer and the review text and this is really what we're focused on as that's really what uh, the the whole purpose of this video is and then we see that branch is Hong Kong uh, we do also have Paris so it's it's not just one branch it's it's Disneyland as a whole and we're going to of course focus on the text so I'm going to actually I'll leave it open just so we get we run into one issue and I can hopefully explain that um, as you can see at the beginning I have imported pandas so what it would allow us is of course it would allow us to read the file so df equals pd.read excel and then the file name is in my case Disneyland reviews.xlsx and then I'll add here engine equals open by Excel as in various cases you might have an issue loading an Excel file um, if you install open by Excel this is one way to solve that so I'll just have it here you might try to, to run this code without this engine um, and what we're going to do is first let's have all the reviews into our list Right, so we know that we have an Excel file and we have one of the columns named review underscore text having all the reviews. So for i in range len of df dot review underscore text. So that is the name of our column. What we're going to do is reviews dot append. So we're going to append to our reviews list df dot review underscore text and then i. Right, so we iterate through all of them and one by one we add them to our list. So we don't really need the file anymore, we just have all the reviews stored into our list. Now don't forget I still have the file open, so if I am to run this, um, this script I'll get an error, so I wanted to show that real quick. In case you run into some sort of an error that permission is denied, of course there can be many reasons, but one of the easiest uh, mistakes that uh, one can make and I've made it many times before is just having the file opened as in that case Python doesn't have access to it so first make sure to close the file and then if we run it it would run uh, good now the question is if we know the polarity and the sentiment of these over 40,000 reviews how do we make sense of that one way is to count the negative reviews and the positive reviews and if you want to analyze them further you can even store the negative reviews into a list same as for positive reviews so how do we define a positive review first of course we need to do the same as what we did up here we need to process the review using text blob and then we need to check the polarity so we're going to do the following for i in range len of reviews so for all the reviews that we have in the list first review would be equal to text Lob reviews i all right so we're going to one by one once we have that review processed through text blob if review dot polarity is greater than 0 0.7 so th that would be our condition for a review being positive we're going to count that as positive and positive reviews dot append review so our list of reviews would include this one if, of course for all the reviews that have this criteria met l if the review dot polarity is lower than 0 0.7 then that would mean we have a negative review and we're going to include that into the negative reviews list append review if that's not the case we can just pass we can we can do plenty of things but for now let's pass and let's see the outcome of this and of course it's uh, over 40,000 reviews so it does take some time um, but it's it's a lot faster than going through the 40,000 reviews uh, one by one manually. Um, one of the ways that you can you can make a, a conclusion if it's a good place to go in this case, such as Disneyland, or if it's if it's a good product or if the customers like it or not, is to have a ratio between the positive and the negative reviews. So let's take a look into the case of of this example. Um, if we take a look at the positive reviews, we have 507. So we have 507 out of the 40,000. And you might say, well, that's a very low amount. Well, let's take a look at the negative ones. Oh, 
that's not correct. I think I have here mistaken. So this should be minus 0.7. Of course, we cannot have all of the reviews being negative or actually all of these being together. So we should have plus 0.7, of course, all, or lower than minus 0.7. So that was a typo. We cannot have that many negative reviews. Um, well, we can, but it's very unlikely that Disneyland has that. So we're going to wait for 10 more seconds. My apologies for that. I should pay attention uh, and not rush with typing these various conditions. But what I was saying is if we compare the positive to negative reviews, if we get a huge number, so if the positive reviews outnumber the negative ones significantly, then we might uh, have a different decision or different conclusion. So if you're comparing two products that have one having a thousand reviews and the other one having a million reviews, well, million is exaggerating, but in any case, then you might want to compare the ratio of the positive ones, so 507 with the negative ones, in this case, only 12. So. Let's print all the negative reviews. So for I in range neg reviews, orange, len of negative reviews, print negative reviews I. So the first one that we have is, so this I guess is Hong Kong. Hong Kong Disney is boring. Go Ocean Park, go La Disney, but don't go HK. So this is Los Angeles Disney, but don't go Hong Kong Disney. So this is one of the negative reviews. Been to one, been to all. Of course, it's just an example that uh, indeed these are negative, uh, um, negative reviews. It's good to always take a look into the outcome, not only in terms of the numbers, but also into the classification. Um, I would expect that part of these 507 are, of course, incorrect. It's, it's difficult to have all of them correct. And probably um, there are plenty of positive and negative reviews between the minus 0 0.7 and the plus 0 0.7. But uh, it's, of course, something that we need to decide where to put the threshold. We can't just include all. Otherwise, we classify a lot of neutral ones into one or the other category. That would be all regarding this video. Please let me know in the comments section if you have any questions. And, of course, I'll see you in the next one.